so a couple weeks ago we got an NJT coolant coalescer from nextgentechnologies.com and uh, I've seen all my buddies get one of these uh, Amish got one, Saunders got one, I even saw Titan, uh, Titans of CNC got one too and uh, I've been wanting one for quite a while and what it does is it filters the, it kind of skims the coolant um, much better than a belt skimmer does so I've been looking forward to getting one, glad we finally did it was about 500 bucks, uh, US dollars, and uh, in this video we're gonna install it. All right, so we're in the process of installing that coolant coalescer. Angelo has drained, um, what, the big hose, the, the front tank. So the Nakamura is set up with a small baby coolant tank here, and they hooked us up with a long pipe and a huge tank in the back. So what'd you do? We're gonna have to redrain this tank here. Yep. We're gonna have to disconnect, basically plug off that line there. So you close that. Yep. We keep that one open so we can drain out most of this hose. Then we're gonna disconnect this coupling here and essentially catch whatever spill and we're able to slide that out. Ideally we would move this over here so we can close that off, drain it, and just quick disconnect right, it. Yeah. Speed it up. Speed yeah, basically it. this was installed in kind of the wrong place. Like it's low profile because it doesn't stick out too much. Yeah. If we move it to there, it's gonna stick out another four inches, but yeah. But then at least we can at least we can access. access because we can't even clean this thing out because it's tied in with all this auxiliary stuff. Yeah, so we have to undo quite a bit. Yep. And then, uh, so how did you drain all the coolant? I used the pump. Which one? The, oh, the, the one that it came with. This little pod yeah, pump that it came with. About it. That black hose, it didn't pick up anything with that black hose. And as soon as I plug in that uh, clear one, it like huh, shot off the shot out the tank, sprayed coolant everywhere. And yeah, that's awesome. Out. So now when I undo this, one person's gonna have to catch this and, and lift, yeah. Because it's got still got uh, a little bit. And right. there will be some spill from here. So now that we have the middle coolant tank out, we can clean it properly, get it all set up, get the coalescer pump and float unit installed in that tank. Um, we think we're going to mount the um, coalescer unit right there on the back of the machine. It comes with a magnet plate, which is no joke. It is very strong. Um, so that's going to mount here probably, and hopefully the hoses will be long enough to get there. Something a bunch of my buddies said when they got it is buy proper hose clamps because uh, the ones that come with it work for some things but don't work for others. You do not want a hose popping off. But you need you to kind of help push this whole thing over. Okay. Right? You can probably put your foot right on there. Okay. So we're using three people to disconnect this and move some stuff over. Let's see. When I say go. But if yeah. we if we just unplug it, like unscrew it from the thing, like with all the Allen keys, yeah, and then it'll be free. It's what kind of connection is that? Sort of, I don't know. It's like a back shell connector. I wonder if we can just unplug it. Okay. Well, I, I can. It's unthread the ring. Yeah. Just do that then. Sweet. Yeah, just the back shell. Oh, there you go. 
that's a mil spec backshell connector with the green. Sweet. Yeah. And there's two, right? Or are they both? No, they're both the same one. Yeah. So we should be clear now. So at this point, we should be able to roll out the yeah. center. Uh, yeah, you let me know if anything is okay. catching. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah, you're good. Here we go. So actually, fun fact, one of the reasons why the machine is at like a five degree angle from being totally square is so that we can actually roll this thing out. Because if the machine was square like we originally had it, um, it would have just hit here. And that's not acceptable, so. Look at that. It's bigger than I thought it was, because yeah. it is kind of deep. Yeah, so these are all essentially just screens to be serviced. So Angelo already sucked out this bucket full of what was in here, and uh, yeah, beautiful. Coolant pumps into there, fills up, goes through the whole lattice structure right there. All the junk floats to the top. You can already start to see it a little bit. And then it falls over this edge right here. It goes down into the drain where it'll flow back into the tank. So inside there, there's the three floaty things that float to the top. And you can see the little vortex in the middle where it's sucking the oils right from the surface. Um, also notice how that third ball in the back is kind of lower than the rest because something's causing it to sit crooked. Uh, it's really tight quarters in here in this Nakamura, so uh, it's kind of tight to get the, the floaters and the pump in the bottom to sit comfortably. But you can see it working, that's pretty cool. What was on this side? Oh, it's getting pulled down by the sensor. Okay. Check that out. That looks so much better. Yeah, they're getting a bunch of crud on top of here. Nice. Update on the skimmer. We've had this thing on for a day or two now. Uh, we haven't even run the lathe, so we're not adding more oil to it. This is just filtering what's been sitting there. Obviously working very well so far. The coolant looks really white, really good. It's It looks really good so far, very happy. Check back in a couple days after we actually use the lathe. So this seems like the perfect time to uh, explain something I just got because the reason why I got it just happened as I'm I'll show you.
So on our fixture right here, we use these uh, metric M6 uh, four millimeter uh, hex head bolts, and they tend to strip out. And I just stripped this one out, so I'm gonna have to drill it out or end mill uh, the head off or something uh, to get it out, because they just wear out, and we use them a lot, and we hit them with the impact. We loosen with the impact, and we tighten with the drill. Um, so I was cruising the McMaster car website, buying some other stuff, when I realized, holy moly, I can buy the exact same thing in a Torx Plus head instead of a hex. Now Torx Plus lets you put a lot more um, force into the cut, it let, or into the, the tool, and it's just got a lot more engagement, so it doesn't strip out nearly as easily. Um, and they're the same price. They're basically the exact same price as the regular ones, so why would you, why would you not? So I've got them installed here, um, but ah, so I'm literally removing the screw for the very last time to throw it in the garbage when it's stripped out. Um, I got all the other ones out, but that's okay. So I'm really excited to get the uh, Torx Plus ones in. Not only that, but we use these little ones. These are a 440 thread with a, I don't know, small hex head. Uh, they screw the handles in from the back side there, and we tend to strip those out too and it really sucks to do that. Um, so I did get, I did get a bunch of those also in Torx Plus, which makes me very excited, except I got them one size too short. I got them half inch, they're supposed to be 5 eighths. I feel really dumb, but that's okay. Um, I bought a lot of them too, I bought like 300. So, too short, too short, that's okay. It's like eight bucks for a box, so I'm not complaining at all. Uh, so my next McMaster order is going to have the right size of that. To go with the Torx Plus, obviously you need Torx Plus uh, bits as well. 10 IP is that size, and then these are I think 27 IP. Yeah. And these are cheap too, these are like three bucks each. It's like, why would you not? Um, I like, I like these ones for removing, but I like these ones. Uh, let's see if I can find one. Here we go. I like these ones for the little ones because there's a magnet in here and then when we pull them out of the fixture, it sticks to the uh, screwdriver. So I like that. Whereas these ones don't, but they don't have to. So the power just flickered a bunch. We saw the lights going off and I don't like that happening when the mill is running. Um, luckily, 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 it was doing a cut uh, at the top of the blade what I definitely don't want is for it to stop mid-cut while cutting the bevels because it'll leave like a spot and that'd be really bad. So this is a safe place to, to, for it to power down basically. Before every single knife goes out the door, it gets a thorough check and inspection by me. Um, Eric finishes the knives and assembles them, and uh, I check them out. So I, I'm checking for lots of different details. Uh, perfect action, perfect fit and finish. Make sure all the parts are there, make sure they're clean, make sure they work really good, make sure they have oil, and uh, just nice to be able to go over every single one and make sure that everything is on point. All right guys, well thanks for watching this video, and um, stay tuned for another video. Let us know in the comments what sort of uh, skimmer or coalescer you guys like to use. I'm really liking this one.